All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another episode of D&D Dynamite 80s. I'm DH. I'm DC. And we're here to take you on another fun-filled journey back into a look at a great decade, the 80s. DC, I'm going to kind of throw it over to you tonight. We have got uh, some amazing individuals. Uh, Absolutely. That's going to be joining us tonight. Yep. So I'm going to, without further ado, I'm going to throw it over to you and let you introduce them. Yeah, these guys actually live in our back backyard or we're in their backyard or however well you want to look at that. Yeah, which is really cool because I think this is a first for us to have somebody from our This area. close. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Uh, no, we got, we got the gentleman. <laughs> That's right. We can get out to a show easily. So, and that, we plan on doing that, that's for yes, sure. Yes, definitely. Um, awesome. Yeah, we've got Child's Anthem, the music of Toto, and yes. gentlemen, they're joining us are uh, Jim Frazier and yes. Scott Bernard and Keith Landry. Guys, how are y'all today? Doing good. Doing good. Doing wonderful. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Like I said, and I want to do this on while we're recording, we appreciate your time, guys. We really yeah, do. Definitely. Um, yeah. Let me let me let me start with this first. I, I'm just uh, want to know what kind of when did you know you wanted to get into making music as a career? Was it like early? Uh, you know, all musicians probably are a little different, of course. But uh, was it early in life, or some of you a little later in life? Uh, Go ahead, Scott. Goes for well, for me, it was, it was, I, I probably would have been kicked out of my family had I not been a musician, you know? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was way early. Uh, uh, in the early seventies and all my whole family played. So I knew it. And yeah. So okay. yeah, I grew up thinking this is what I was going to do. So. Followed that. Awesome. Guys, anybody else? Keith? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, no, I, I started, uh, like, actually, my, my family, we were six boys and one girl in my family, and and uh, dad wasn't too keen on me playing. At first, it was cute, because Keith's in a little band. I was in a band since the sixth grade, and uh, when I got a little older, he's like, he tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> All musicians turn into drug addicts or alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I... Uh, when I landed the gig with Toto, they came to see me at the, the Sanger Theater in New Orleans and dad, mom and dad brought the whole family and dad leans over to mom and said, well, we can't talk him out of it now. He's hooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and for me, it was the same as uh, Scott. I, I, my whole life, I've always known. And I come from a family of musicians. So even though my dad was uh, supportive, he he kind of encouraged me to look at doing something else and I, I wouldn't have it. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. To kind of follow up on that, uh, something that I'm kind of interested in because you guys are all very talented and have a very diverse background of individuals you've performed with or worked mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of interested in the story of, of how child Anthem come together. How did you come together as a band? Well, I can take that. Um, most of the players in the band are session musicians here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times uh, in between takes, uh, there would be downtime and somebody would start playing a child's anthem song. Or I'm sorry, a Toto song. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah right. the Toto song. And um, everybody would kind of kind of jump in who knew it. And eventually they kind of started saying, hey, why don't we try this as a band? So uh, that's basically how it came about. And uh, uh, it took a couple years to kind of get it going. But uh, once Scott Bernard joined us, it kind of felt like, all right, we have all the right pieces in place. And we kind of started pushing it out there to see what would happen. That's really cool. Um, yeah, let me ask this as well. Um, I know all of you have worked in different genres of music. Uh, as I did some research and background on you guys, um, that's got to be a cool deal for a musician to be a, that broad and, and spectrum. Is it? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, yeah. It keeps, it keeps every day interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. especially in the studio world, you never really know. 
uh, for the most part, when I, you know, when you go to a session, you don't really even know what songs you're playing or what style. Right. So they'll just pop it on you. You know, they'll let you hear the, the, the work tape and, you know, you look at the chart and you just kind of go. And sometimes it's a, uh, it'd be a seventies funk tune or a R and B tune or, you know, country or rock or, you know, uh, rarely any polka, but for the most part, <laughs> <laughs> everything else. <laughs> so it's, uh, it actually stretches you, you know, you got to think outside the box. Okay. You know? And uh, you got to, you got to put your, put a hat on of a guy, you know, you may be playing a tune that's, uh, hey, we want this uh, 60s soul vibe. So I got to go in my head that vibe of what uh, a guitar player would have played on that stuff. So you have to kind of pull yeah. tone. You got to think about what the tone would have been and the way he plays, you know, that kind of thing. So, so that it's a, it's a super cool uh, experience to, you know, after a while, it, it takes a while to stretch you out to kind of get comfortable to do that. But after a while, it, it's pretty rewarding. Just to kind of follow up on that, I, and, and it's like I said, it's really unique because there's so many different styles that, that you guys have played and, and kind of performed with. What are some of, of each of your uh, major musical influences that you think have kind of influenced your personal style? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Man, if we want to play rock, paper, scissors all night to, to see who answers <laughs> first, you know. Go ahead. I, you go first, man. Oh. Oh, it, well, for me, it was, you know, I, like Scott, I was child, child of the 70s. So that whole scene got me hooked. And um, then, of course, everything that came along from the 80s. Uh, I was kind of eclectic. I liked a lot of uh, a lot of soft rock like bread. Yeah. And uh, 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 Simon and Garfunkel, huge influence for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but then as I got a little bit older, um, it kind of got into the instrumental scene. Um, Toto certainly, certainly caught my attention when they came on board. Uh, I was a big fan of the Dregs, Dixie Dregs with Steve Morris. Um, and then in the eighties, Mr. Mister, I know Scott feels the same way. That was, that was a big one for us. Yeah. So, uh, man, I, I, I probably grew up on the exact same things that Jim did. Uh, my initially the Beatles was complete foundational for me. Um, uh, my family, I mean, that was it. The Beatles, you know, uh, I, Kansas, big, 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 big influence for me. And, you know, the, the 70s rock stuff, Rush, um, uh, shoot, I can go on. Uh, Foreigner, Boston, huge. ELO, yeah. big, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, the fusion stuff, you know, Chick Corea, uh, the dregs. Um, gosh, I could go on. But I dig the Carpenters quite a bit. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. like a lot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the 70s AM radio stuff that Jim was talking about. Yeah. The 80s, Mr. Mr., big influence. Toto, obviously, the, all the, the power pop stuff of, of uh, the today. And, you know, I'm a big power pop fan, you know, be the less stuff. And, yeah, I mean, I, I could go on all night about it, but um, yeah. Oh, and I gotta say, my one of my biggest guitar influences is Phil Keggy. I don't know if you guys know who that is. He's a he's a Christian guitar player, and he's he's in the Christian pop wor uh, rock world. And he man, he's amazing. He's amazing. I just grew up with him as a kid. And and I mean, look up Matthew Ward if you want to hear a great vocalist and a, a Christian pop guy. Um, I don't know. I could, I could go on. Yeah, sorry, I'm not gonna go on, but I can't. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This next one, I'm gonna kind of focus Keith, on. I want. We've got to yeah, ask yeah, Keith. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, That's where get I'm, Keith's influences. For, yeah, for for me, it was, you know, being a high tenor, I always tend to want to go for like Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, oh yeah. Singers that yeah. sing all high stuff and um, Mickey Thomas and. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh, wow, that guy's singing in my range. You know, because when I was little, dad goes, how come you sing like a girl? 
we, we're, we're still asking you that question. Well, my dad had a big, low baritone voice, you know, and he didn't understand how I can sing so high or why I would sing so high. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the next one I wanted to kind of focus in on with Keith was this. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, this, I took my stuff son. We went and seen uh, Toto at Bridgestone. Uh-huh. And uh, I thought it was interesting. He's about 30, 30-ish, 31, that age. Uh-huh. And I said, well, how'd you enjoy the shows as we were driving home? And he said, well, to be honest with you, I think I like Toto better. Really? So. I've heard that from a few people. I thought, I thought that was interesting. Uh, uh, very, and they were they were absolutely awesome, and that leads me into this this one. How is the longevity of their music? How 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 does that happen? Where people of all different age groups are just in that they're into it, their music. Well, it's so musical. The, the, their music was always about the music first. Um, when Jeff Picaro, he played on so many different records and stuff. And there was some tunes that I said, Jeff, man, you're playing it real simple. He goes, man, if it's if it's just a, a two and four, I'm making the best effing two and four you ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And he did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, think, I think Africa uh, having its resurgence, you know, be it on a, on a TV show or, you know, um, songs like that just don't go away. You hear it on if you're shopping, you're gonna hear Africa, you know. So kids know those tunes even if they don't think they do, just by being in a mall or in a store, you know. Yeah. It's everywhere. And, and I think and Journey too, same thing, you know. Don't absolutely. stop absolutely yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, one of the cool things, and DC can kind of uh attest to this as well. I know like when they're first coming into my room, I'll play Mm-hmm. Some 80s music and mm-hmm. it's amazing to see these kids react and they're always like what band is this who is this playing and and then the next thing you know they're listening to it so i think it's really cool that that whole i guess era of music it just is staying alive it's just really cool and i think that's where i'm really into the bands that cover the material Mm-hmm. Because you guys are keeping that alive and kind of keeping it's so cr- so valuable. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's so crucial. I, yeah, I think I think you've touched on a point: is the music is uh, timeless, and it it does seem to cover a much wider demographic. So um, when people go, people our age go out to hear music, the most of the time they want to hear the stuff they grew up with. Yes, mm. and 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 then they want to hear it performed in a way that it sounds like the way they remember. Right. So mm-hmm. I, think, I think for that reason that the whole tribute thing has kind of picked up steam because and, it is great music. And the thing I like about the tribute scene is I can come watch a tribute band and it seems like a more personal venue. I don't know. Right. There's just something that seems more personal about right. it. Exactly. Than, you know, setting in exactly. some uh, stadium somewhere. So, sure. I mean, I hey, man, we play arenas, that. right, Keith? Jim? We play well, big arenas, right? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. Yeah, it's you're correct, man. And the generation gap is not as big as it used to be. No, you know, back when I was a kid, you know, your parents listened to stuff you did, just didn't listen to. You know, now it's easy to see a kid and his dad with both having Led Zeppelin shirts on or, right. you know what I mean? Yep. That yep. The musical. That's a great point. Really, yeah. really small. And, yeah. And another point is there's no guitar solos in today's music. So these, yes. these new kids are listening to the older rock stuff, the Lucathers, the Steve, the Neil Sean, yeah. the, the Scott Bernards and the, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, that, that's, that's, where, there, Scott. that's where they get <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's, that's true. That's a good point. Their influences. Yeah. You know, if a kid if a kid wants to learn how to play guitar, he's not going to put on the latest radio hits to work. You know, my daughter right. uh, the other day asked me to teach her barracuda. Nice. You know? cool. Oh wow! That so is cool. that is cool. There's no there's no radio hits. There may be some fringe artists that are kind of you know bringing the rock back, but or but there's yeah. you're right, man. That's a good point. 
it's not mainstream anymore. Not at nope. all. No. So. No, but it, it just seems to me, and maybe it's because that was, you know, the 70s and 80s was the era I grew up in, but it just seems like the musicians that play that music or played then or like you guys with the tribute band that play, it just seems like you're such, I say, at another level of talent. You guys are so talented compared to some of the stuff you see today to me. And yeah. I mean, that's just my that's true. Me, but I mean, it really is. You guys are musicians, not just out there making a sound. You're actual yeah. artists, musicians. Yeah. Well, to make, to make a living at it, you, you, you certainly have to dedicate your life to it and, and to stay to stay working and to stay relevant. It's a it's a constant constant yeah, thing yeah. To do. So, you know I, I think um i appreciate you saying that but the truth is that's what it takes to make a living at it so well it, it definitely shows i can tell you from the videos and all that i've seen and yep. just listening you guys are amazing i wish i had a fourth of the talent you guys do i couldn't carry a tune in a bucket if i tried <laughs> but thank you that's why you're, we you're correct dh you're exactly <laughs> spot on you just need a bigger bucket <laughs> no they don't no they don't we can keep dreaming though can we dh hey, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. oh wow gentlemen we appreciate it uh yes. somebody tell us how to keep up with you guys we know but tell everybody that's listening or watching in and uh where we can pick pick you up here locally uh the soonest third and Lindsay or wherever next you're gonna play at yeah, we're uh, we're currently working on a, another third and Lindsley show, probably awesome. summer, probably summer, and it's not dialed in just yet. Fantastic. Uh, but in the meantime, www.childsanthem.com, and uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, look us up on YouTube. Uh, we're around. Okay. We're around. <laughs> well, Easy to find. Gotcha. Well, DC, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speak for both of us. The next third and Lindsay show, we're there, and I'm even going to let you buy the tickets. And the first round. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that, gentlemen. We'll ha yeah. And here's the thing: we'll we'll look you up, and uh, we'll be we'll be the ball headed guys on the front row that's screaming and hollering for you guys. You'll be able to find us easily. Uh, 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 we'd, love, we'd love to have you out. For sure. Love to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, best of luck to you, and uh, 